Hi everyone. Today we're going to go over the three classes of hormones. Okay, there's three primary classes that all hormones fall under. I know I've done some videos on uh, the endocrine system and on hormone function, so be sure to watch those if you want more detailed uh, specifics on those. Um, but here we're just going to talk about the actual classes, meaning every hormone is going to fall under one of these classes. Uh, keep in mind what a hormone is. It's a chemical that is secreted in the bloodstream. Uh, we can take that same chemical if it's secreted elsewhere, for instance, a neuro, you know, a uh, synapse, uh, it would be called a neurotransmitter. could be the same exact chemical. So a lot of people think a hormone is classified as a hormone based on chemical composition, and that's not true. It's based on hormone classification based on location of secretion. So be sure to keep that in mind. These are all secreted directly into the bloodstream. Uh, the first category is the steroids, okay? Um, all steroids are uh, hydrophobic, and I wanted to mention that right off the bat, which means all steroids hate water, right? Hydrophobic meaning, you know, hydro meaning water, phobic hate, so they all hate water, which means they have to be lipid-based. Anything hydrophobic is going to be lipid-based, and all steroids, which is true, have a lipid precursor. That precursor for all steroids is cholesterol. That is the precursor for all steroid hormones. And again, we have a lot of steroid hormones. Um, I can give some quick examples of some common ones. You know, really common ones that everybody's heard of would be things like testosterone, uh, estrogen, progesterone, um, things like aldosterone, uh, cortisol, uh, corticosterone is another, I'm not going to list all these, but these are some really common steroid hormones everybody's heard of. Again, all of which come from cholesterol, shows the importance of cholesterol in the body, and they are all hydrophobic. Now, I'll say this, when um, these hormones flow through the bloodstream, okay, because that's where they're going, right, into the bloodstream first, uh, they will require a transport protein. Why? They will require transport protein because they are hydrophobic. Anything hydrophobic is, is lipid-based, right, and is going to require a transport protein. Um, <clears throat> So that's just something little to remember. It's going to need uh, uh, to, to latch onto a protein in order to, to properly be transported through the bloodstream. Um, and that's the way, by the way, cholesterol is transported. It's transported on a transport protein itself through the bloodstream. Um, so keep that in mind. We'll talk more about that down the road. Um, second category is going to be called the monoamines. Okay, And these are the examples of the monoamines. We have two... T3 and T4, which many of you guys know, these are the two thyroid hormones of the body, uh, thyroxin and triadothyronine. These two are also hydrophobic, which would need that same transport protein. These are the only two hydrophobic hormones under the monoamines, okay, which makes them a little bit unique. The other monoamines are hydrophilic, okay, and what are they? Uh, they are the catecholamines here, uh, epinephrine and norepinephrine, okay. Um, hydrophilic, by the way, means water-loving, so they have no issues with water. They would not need the transport protein, okay, through the bloodstream. They do, do not need it. Um, <clears throat> however, I will say this, when they get to their designated receptor, wherever that's going to be, and it's different for every hormone, when they get to their designated receptor, because they are hydrophilic, they will need something called a second messenger. Uh, they will bind to that designated receptor just like they're supposed to, but there will be a cascade of effects that occur, and I'll do a video on this sometime. There will be a cascade of effects that occur um, and will require something called a second messenger to carry out the final uh, opening of the sodium gates and basically cascade of effects that, are, that will occur uh, with the, you know, with, with basically with the function of this hormone or this hormone or this hormone. 
So just for right now, you can kind of realize that anything hydrophilic needs a second messenger, okay? And that's at the receptor level. <clears throat> so that would be, again, under the monoamines, epinephrine and norepinephrine, dopamine and melatonin, okay? They fall under this category. Now, that leaves us with the third, which is the peptides, and this is what makes it easy. Is peptides have to be all other hormones. If they're not a steroid, they're not a monoamine, they have to be a peptide. So that kind of makes it easy. You can figure out what any hormone is based on this little, you know, kind of rundown I've given you here. All peptides are hydrophilic, okay? That also makes it easy. They, therefore, won't need the transport protein, but they will use the second messenger. So that's a quick rundown on hormones. I really hope that helps. Uh, watch our other videos on hormones as well. Uh, but till next time, good luck and good study.